Swami Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai Yantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Samavita Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Oh Glory is the Assembly Devotees Oh Glory is the Assembly Devotees Oh Glory is the Assembly Devotees Oh Glory is the Shri Guru and Shri Guru Glory is the Shiva Prabhupada Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 9, Text 15. Uh, chapter 9, Text 15. Is this the right book? Yeah. This is probably worship. <laughs> Somebody's been reading another Bhagavatam. <laughs> Okay, three nine fifteen. Yasya Batara Guna Karma Vidambana Ni Yasya Batara Guna Karma Vidambana Ni Namani Yesu Vigame Vashagrananti Namani Yesu Vigame Vashagrananti Te Naika Janma Shamalam Sahasaiva Hitva Te Naika Janma Shamalam Sahasaiva Hitva Samyantya Papri Tamritam Tamajam Prapadye Samyantya Yasya Vatara Guna Karma Vidambanani Yasya Vatara Guna Karma Vidambanani Namani Yesu Vigame Vibhashakrananti Namani Yesu Vigame Vibhashakrananti Te Naika Janma Shamalam Sahasaiva Hitva Te Naika Janma Shamalam Sahasaiva Hitva Samyantya Papritam Ritam Tamajam Prapadye Samyantya Papritam Ritam Tamajam Prapadye Yasya Yasya Who's? Who's? Avatara, Avatara, incarnations, incarnations, guna, guna, transcendental qualities, transcendental qualities, karma, karma, activities, activities, vidambanani, vidambanani, all mysterious, all mysterious, namani, namani, transcendental names, transcendental names, ye, ye, those, those. Asuvigame, Asuvigame, while quitting his life, while quitting this life, Vibhasha, Vibhasha, automatically, automatically, Grinanti, Grinanti, in book, in book, Te, Te, they, they, Anaika, Anaika, many, many, Janma, Janma, births, births. Shamalam, Shamalam, accumulated sins, accumulated sins, Sahasa, Sahasa, immediately, immediately, Eva, Eva, certainly, certainly, Itva, Itva, giving up, giving up, Samyanti, Samyanti, obtained, obtained, Apabrita, Apabrita, open, open. Amritam, Amritam, immortality, immortality. Tam, Tam, him, him. Ajam, Ajam, the unborn, the unborn. Prapadye, Prapadye. I take shelter. I take shelter. I take shelter. Let me take shelter of the lotus feet of him, whose incarnations, qualities, and activities 
are mysterious imitations of worldly affairs. One who invokes his transcendental names, even unconsciously, at the time he quits this life, is suddenly washed immediately of the sins of many, many births and attains him without fail. Purport. The activities of the incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are a kind of imitation of the activities going on in the material world. He is just like an actor on a stage. An actor imitates the activities of a king on stage, although actually he is not the king. Similarly, when the Lord incarnates, he imitates parts with which he has nothing to do. In Bhagavad Gita 4.14, it is said that the Lord has nothing to do with the activities in which he is supposedly engaged. Namam karmani limpanti name karma pale spriha. The Lord is omnipotent. Simply by his will, he can perform anything and everything. <coughs> when the Lord appeared as Lord Krishna, he played the part of the son of Yashoda and Nanda, and he lifted the Govardhan hill. Although lifting a hill is not his concern, he can lift millions of Govardhan hills by his simple desire, he does not need to lift it with his hand, but he imitates the ordinary living entities by this lifting, and at the same time, he exhibits his supernatural power. Thus his name is chanted as the lifter of Govardhan Hill, or Sri Govardhan and Hari. Therefore, his acts in his incarnations and his partiality to the bodies are all imitations only, just like the stage makeup of an expert dramatical player. His acts in that capacity, however, are all omnipotent, and the remembrance of such activities of the incarnations of the Supreme Personality Godhead is as powerful as the Lord Himself. Ajahn will remember the holy name of the Lord, Narayana, by merely calling the name of his son Narayana and then gave him a complete opportunity to achieve the highest perfection of life. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha So we see in this beautiful verse, this analogy is used that Krishna is like a, an actor on the stage just playing the part, and Prabhupada quotes from the Bhagavad Gita, Namam Karmani Limpati Name Karma Palaisbriha, that activities do not um, contaminate me, and I don't have any desire for the result of activity. So why is Krishna doing any activity? He's, he's playing, the, playing the role perfectly, just like an actor because he has certain purposes in mind. Ultimately, his purposes, his primary purposes, is to come and showcase the love between him and the residents of Vrindavan in this material world, to attract the souls from this world to, to go back to Godhead. And his secondary purpose is killing demons and establishing dharma and so on. So, we see it. Out of all the examples Prabhupada could have given about Krishna being like an actor on the stage, he chose one that's very close to his heart. Um, we know that when Prabhupada was leaving his body in Vrindavan and his, he was on the bed translating the Bhagavatam, that he had a, a spontaneous sudden desire to go to Govardhan Hill. And he asked Lokanath Maharaj to ready all the, the bullet carts and you know the Padhyatra and he wanted to go there for all the devotees to, to go with that, and that's one of his last um, acts. So he could have given so many examples about, you know, how Krishna is imitating the activities of man, but he chose the example of lifting Govardhan Hill. And he says in that regard that Krishna could have lifted it simply by his eye. He didn't need to use his hand, but using his hand was like a human-like imitation. So that was the example that that uh, appeared in Prabhupada's mind when he was giving an example in his purport, so it's quite nice. Um, and thus, he is named as the lifter of Govardhan Hill, Sri Govardhan Adhari. So, 
in uh, full honesty, I, was, I just opened the WhatsApp this morning to see, oh, can I go to your class? And when he's giving class, it's like, oh no, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> That was about it. It was seven o'clock, so I didn't prepare too much for the class. But uh, I, I read the prayer for them. I thought, you know, that's an amazing prayer for them. I thought, well, thank God we don't hear that. Speak about God we don't hear that. Nobody minds. So, also, God we don't hear is very, um, very close to me because I spent a lot of time there too. And it's something that's uh, that's very close to the heart of our Sampradaya as well. So, as we know, Gilbert Ann Hill, um, even though we give a primary importance to Vrindavan, um, later on in, in Krishna's eternal daily pastimes, he spends most of the time actually at Gilbert Ann Hill. Okay? Um, Gilbert Ann Hill is close to Nandagram, and that's where the primary place where Krishna takes the cows for herding. And then sometimes around lunchtime, he he uh, goes with a few close friends to Radhakund or like that. There's some um, eternal rhythm to his his day. So, Gogodan Hill is, is a very special place, and we know in the past time that it's also the place where all the devotees from all different kinds of relationships got to simultaneously drink in the sight of Krishna for seven days. And it, it was it was a very pivotal event um, in in the uh, particularly the relationship of the gopis with Krishna it was where there was a the awakening of the poor varag. So there's yeah the initial attraction to Krishna because that much time was spent in that much close proximity with Krishna. Uh, usually um, Mother Yashoda gets to, to, to feed Krishna in the evening and to bathe him in the morning and, and to uh, send him on his way with a, a nice um, picnic lunch and she finds so many ways to, oh, but you forgot this, come back, don't forget this one, oh, here's an extra snack. You know, and and he, if you read the Vriya Bhagavatam reader, he has to fight very hard to, to escape the loving clutches of his mother's affection to, to go and spend time with his friends. And then in the day, Krishna is with his friends in the forest sometimes, in the forest of Vrindavan, sometimes they're in Govardhan Hill, different places where there's new grass for the cows. And that time he spent with his friends in the day. And sometimes, as we mentioned, he might slip off in the middle of the day to have a, a rendezvous with, with Radha and her friends. And then again in the evening, he comes back to Nandagram, there's a big supper with Nanda Baba. And sometimes in the middle of the night he sneaks off for his uh, infamous activities. But um, yeah, all, all of the devotees have a different time of the day to be with Krishna. But in, in the Govardhan pastime, they all got to be with him continuously and together for seven days. And um, we know that this is where many of the Acharyas came to, to spend their time around Govardhan. Um, Sanatana Goswami had his kutir on the banks of the Manasi Ganga, and he was doing Govardhan Parikrama regularly there. And um, Raghunath Das Goswami and Krishnas Kaviraj Jeev Goswami, they all lived nearby at Radhakund, also taking shelter of Govardhan. So I thought we'd read from this book a little bit. This is a book by um, Madhavananda Prabhu. About, he spent many years gathering different uh, pramanas, different, interviewing different senior devotees, and reading all the different accounts and prayers about Govinda, and he's, he's um, compiled it nicely. So there's an article there called The Identity of Govinda and Hill. Because sometimes is described as the best devotee, Hari Dasavarya, in, in Radharani's own words, right, in the Bhagavatam. Hantaya Madriya Abala, Hari Dasavarya. Oh, my friends, this hill is the very best of Lord Krishna's servants. 
because it's providing on the grass or the water or the fruits, the caves or the, the pastime places. Um, doing puja for the two brothers, Rama and Krishna, in this way. And, but we also hear on the other side, in the Govardhan hill pastime, that Krishna himself assumed the form of the hill and he said, Shaivo Smi, I am the hill. Right. And he said, and you and you know, there was so much food offerings made and he was saying, bring more, bring more. So in, in that side, he seems to be directly Krishna. So when you have Govardhan Shilas, maybe you're worshipping Govardhan on the farm, or maybe you have some Govardhan Shilas at home, and then you have to see which mood to worship them in. Do you worship him as the best of the devotees? Or do you worship him as directly Krishna? Sometimes there's one, some, some of this, the local devotees in Govardhan have a saying that, uh, you know, Lord Shiva is generally said to be Vaishnavanam Yatasham, the best of the devotees, right? Best of the Vaishnavas. And we have this other statement, Hari Dasabhari, that Giraj is the best of the servants of Hari. So, which one is true? So, there's a, the local devotees are, appreciate it in terms of the analogy that, well, Lord Shiva is a very great devotee and he carries Mother Ganga on his head. But Sri Govardhan is also a very great devotee, but he carries Radha Kunda on his head. Radha Kunda, the, the place of the daily pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So in this way they reconcile the two and they consider indeed Guruaj to be the best of Krishna's servants like that. Okay, so in this article, Madhavananda Prabhu gives, um, presents the two different modes of worship, well actually in some extra conceptions, and then he has a nice synthesis at the end, so maybe we'll read and discuss along the way. Who exactly is Giriraj, and how can he be understood as both a manifestation of Krishna as well as a devotee? Here we, will, here we will briefly examine each of these conceptions and then focus on the conclusion given by the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. So the first conception is that he is directly Krishna. In many places, Shastra and Aracharyas have described Giriraj as being directly Krishna. In his Priti Sandava, Srila Jiva Goswami quotes from the Matura Mahatmya section of the Skanda Purana. Govardhanas cha bhagavan yatra govardhano trita rakshita yadava sarve indra vrishti nivaranat. And so from Skanda Purana says, Govardhan Hill is Bhagavan, God himself, and in his place in Rajasthan, he held himself in the form of that Govardhan Hill. Thus all the Yadava cowherds were rescued from Indra's reign. Similarly, the Gaga Samhita declares that Giriraj is directly Krishna. Girirajo Hare Rupam Sriman Govardhano Giri. Glorious Govardhan Hill is the personified form of Hari. Sri Narayana Bhatta Goswami writes in Narayana Bhatta Charitamrita. Narayana Bhatta Goswami is a, um, he's a Vraj Goswami. Um, a contemporary of the six Goswamis, and he wrote some Govardhan, uh, some some books about the pastime places of Vrindavan, and he was a, basically a contemporary of the Goswamis. So he writes, Asha Govardhana Sakshat Krishna Eva Nasanshaya. This Govardhan is directly Krishna. Of this there is no doubt. So the above statements are clear. Giriraj Govardhan is directly Krishna. Based on this, Numerous devotees worship their Govardhan Shilas as Krishna with a peacock feather and a flute. However, why is Giriraj also addressed as a devotee and in other ways? So now he addresses a, a local mood of the devotees who visit Govardhan, Baba, Giriraj Baba. Uh, it's, it's quite an experience when you catch a, a local bus 
I used to go back and forth on the public transport when I was living in Govindan Hill, and you go on a bus to Matura or something, or Vrindavan. And, and when the bus full of people arrives, that many of them live there, some of them are visitors, but you know, somebody ine inevitably in the bus says, Balgiraj Maharaj Ki, Balgiraj Baba Ki. You know, there's, there's always a, uh, <laughs> a sense of victory at arriving in Govindan Hill, even in the public transport. It's quite a nice experience. So Baba, this concept, many of the residents of Govardhan call Giri Govardhan Baba, which is an affectionate form of address for a senior person and can mean father or a guru figure. There is a long-standing tradition that on Guru Panima, all the residents of Raja come to worship Govardhan Hill. Yeah, actually, if you try and do parikram on, on Govardhan Hill today, it's crowded, no doubt. Um, but if you try and do it on Guru Panima, that's really when all the people come. And uh, you're likely to, uh, <laughs> to get crushed in that crowd. I can tell you first then. Um, some suggest that they do this out of respect for Srila Sanatan Goswami, whose disappearance day falls on that date. However, if you speak to the modern day Vrajvasis, it is clear that very few of them know about Sanatan Goswami. Why then do they come on that day? According to the Vrajvasis, they do so because they see Giriraj as Baba, as their Guru. We also see the concept of Giriraj as Baba in the fact that from the time of Krishna's manifest pastimes up to the present day, Giriraj maintains the Kala people of Raja like a caring father. Amongst the many things that Govardhan Hill provides are grass for the cows, water, fruits from his trees, various edible roots, caves for shelter, and natural minerals for decoration. In his Sarata Darshani commentary, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti explains Krishna's words to his father Nandamaraj in Bhagavatam. He says, My dear father, if we consider that the term Govardhana means he who nourishes the cows, then we can actually experience that meaning here since we see that all the activities related to the nourishment of our cows is exclusively dependent on Govardhan Hill. Therefore, Govardhan Hill alone should be worshipped. In the untitled verses to the lifter of Govardhan Hill found in his Stava Mala, Srila Rupa Goswami has presented the prayers spoken by the people of Raja while Krishna was holding up Govardhan Hill. The people said, O oh, Father, Govardhan, so they use the, the Sanskrit word Tata, which is father. So the, the, the Sanskrit prayer goes, Gire Tata, O, o Father Hill. So, the, so this is again the concept of the, the Prajapasis is Baba, Father, Guru. O Father Govardhan, I pray to you to please become as light as a bunch of fully grown water spinach, so that he, Krishna, will not become tired as he holds you in his hand. O auspicious one, I bow down and offer my respectful obeisances to you. The word Tata in this verse means father. To this day, the concept of Giriraj as Baba is widespread among Brajvasis residing near Govram. From this verse of Stavamala, it seems that this concept of Giriraj as Baba is a manifestation of that love and concern for Krishna's well-being. Okay, so that's two conceptions. Now, the third conception is Mahaprabhu's conception. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sometimes saw Govardhan as a devotee and at other times as Krishna. Chaitanya Charitamrita Antya 6.294 is often cited along with Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur's purport as the answer to the identity of Govardhan Hill. So from the CC. Prabhu Kahe E Shila Krishna Radhigraha In Hara Seva Kara Tumi Kariya Agraha Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Raghunath Das This stone is the transcendental form of Lord Krishna. Worship the stone with eagerness. Srila Isi Bhakti Vranta Swami Prabhupada states in his purport. Srila Bhakti Saranta Saraswati Thakur writes in his Anubhashya, 
that in the opinion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Govardhan Shila, the stone from Govardhan Hill, was directly the form of Krishna, the son of Maharajananda. The Lord used the stone for three years, and then in the heart of Raghunath Das, the Lord awakened devotional service to the stone. The Lord then gave the stone to Raghunath Das, accepting him as one of his most confidential servants. From the above purport, it is clear that Mahaprabhu saw Giriraj as Krishna. Yet according to our Acharyas, there were other occasions when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu addressed Giriraj as a devotee. In Sri Chaitanya Charita, Sri Murari Gupta describes Mahaprabhu's words when he saw Govardhan Hill in Braja. Dhanyo yam Giriraja eva jagati shi Krishna rana muta yacha krita de eva santatamaho Kapala Balai Sahar Evam Jagati Prema Purna Rasada Sri Gora Chanda Swayam Sri Govardhana Eva Sagraham Abhi Ta Pujayan Rittiti Throughout this universe, Giraj Govardhan is the most glorious of bhaktas. Here, Krishna and Brahma always play in great bliss along with the Gopal Balas, exclaiming this of heartfelt eagerness. Sri Gaurajandra, the bestower of the complete spectrum of love for Krishna, danced while worshipping Govardhan Hill. Similarly, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami described Mahaprabhu's reaction when in Jagannath Puri he saw the hill known as Chataka Parvat as Govardhan. Mahaprabhu began reciting a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.21.18. This verse, which was spoken by Srimati Radharani, describes Giriraj as Hari Dasavarya, the best of Krishna's devotees. So, this concept of the greatest devotee is now explained. In the prayers the Giriraj composed by the six Goswamis and other Acharyas following their lines, such as Vishnu Chakravati Dhaka, Giriraj is only presented as the greatest of devotees. Although Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was instructed by Mahaprabhu that Giriraj is Krishna, Das Goswami repeatedly addresses Giriraj as a devotee. The very first word he uses in his famous Govardhana Vasa Pratana Dashagam, 10 appeals for residence near Govardhan, is Nija Pati. Nija Pati Bhuja Danda, right? Nija Pati. O Giriraj, Krishna is your Nija Pati, your own Lord. So if you're saying your Lord, then it's saying that Giriraj is you know, some differentiation of Giriraj from the Lord, like he's a devotee and he's your Lord, right? O oh, Giriraj, Krishna is your Nijapati, your own Lord. In this way, from the start of his prayers, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami establishes his personal concept of Giriraj as a devotee. This is continued in the other verses as he repeatedly prays to Giriraj for residence near him so that Kalanartam, he can witness the pastimes of Radha and Krishna that take place in the caves, peaks, and valleys of Govardhan. And in text 8, he states that none other than Srimati Radharani herself has described Giriraj as a devotee. Throughout their writings, whenever the six Goswamis offer prayers to Giriraj, they address him as a devotee. And here's a few examples. Rindaya Varyam Varnitam Aste Haridasyam. O Giraj, the goddesses of Raja, the gopis, have described you as Haridas, the devotee of Lord Hari. Um, he describes Giraj as Krishnam Boda Preshta, a dear friend of the black of the black cloud, Krishna. And in the same stanza, he says that Krishna is Te Hridayesha, the Lord of Giraj's heart. Varishta Haridasata Vadasamrita Gopandana. Govardhan Hill has the position of the best servant of Lord Hari. And in the Briya Bhagavatam Rita, Srilandat Sanatan Goswami writes, All glories to Govardhan, the emperor of lovely mountains. The Lord's devotees called him the best servant of Hari. Lord Krishna disrupted the sacrifice for worship of Indra to worship Govardhan instead. And then the hill resided for a week on the Lord's Lotus palm. So, 
let's read, the, we'll skip over a few of the sections and read the synthesis, so the conclusion. Um, the synthesis, how do you tie together all these seemingly different conceptions? The accounts in both Bhavishya Purana and the Gaga Sanghita support the idea that Giraj is a manifestation of Krishna in the mood of a devotee. Gaga Sanghita describes that Giraj comes from the heart of Krishna in the form of a desire to please and serve Srimati Radharani and the gopis, while the Bhavishya Purana describes Giraj as coming from the minds of both Radha, the Supreme Devotee, and Krishna, the Supreme Lord. Both would indicate that Giraj is simultaneously Bhagavat Swarupa, the form of God, and Bhakta Swarupa, the form of a devotee. Giraj is both directly Krishna as well as Krishna's expansion as a devotee of Krishna's great, greatest devotee, Radha. As a manifestation of Krishna's love for the Vrajvasis, he is Baba, a father for them. Just as Krishna manifests as Balaram and other expansions, so too Giraj manifests some of his shilas in a way that remind some of Krishna's other brother. So there's different color Govardhan shilas, like Madhava Maharaj, for example, has a very pale white Govardhan shila that he worships as Balaram, and there's dark ones that worship as Krishna, and, and golden fair ones that some devotees worship as Radha. And there's a pramana for that in, in uh, Vishnu Chakravati's Virgil teaching Tami. Moreover, as Srila Jiv Goswami writes in his Yugalashtakam prayers, Krishna Prema Mayi Radha, Radha Prema Mayo Hari. Radha is made of pure love for Krishna, and Hari is made of pure love for Radha. He goes on to say, Krishna Chitas Dita Radha, Radha Chitas Dito Hari. Radha is fixed in the heart of Krishna, and Hari is fixed in the heart of Radha. Giraj, as an emanation from the heart of Krishna, indicates the presence of Radha, who is eternally situated in Krishna's heart. So according to the individual's mood, one may worship Giraj in many ways, however there is a difference in the result. There is a reason why our Acharyas repeatedly stress his worship as a devotee. His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada has described the merciful nature of a devotee. A devotee is more kind than God. A devotee is more merciful than God himself. We should always remember this. Just as a devotee is more merciful than the Lord, the height of Krishna's mercy is shown when he comes as a devotee. Srila Krishna Kaviraj Goswami describes, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Daya Karaha Vichar Vichara Karite Chitta Pabe Chamatkar If you are indeed interested in logic and argument, kindly apply it to the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If you do, you will find it to be strikingly wonderful. This is a famous part of CC. Just do vichar, vichar, do vichar on the daya of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. And that vichar will produce chamakar. So, in the last stanza of his prayers to Govardhan, known as the Sri Govardhan Ashtakam, Sri Vishwanath Chakrabadi Thakur describes why the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu worship Giraj as a devotee. So this is the Palastuti of that. Vinabhavet kim haridasa varya hadasrayam bhakti ritasrayami yam eva saprema nijesha yo shri govardhano me dishatam abhishtam. Without taking shelter of Giraj as the best of Krishna's devotees, one cannot obtain the love he himself possesses. Therefore I strive for that shelter. May Govardhan Hill fulfill my desire and grant me love of his two masters, Radha and Krishna. In this verse, Vishwanath indirectly states that the result of worshipping Krishna, uh, worshipping Giraj as Krishna, is not the same as that obtained by worshipping him as a devotee. Giraj is Krishna, he is Giratari, the lifter of Govardhan Hill. In that capacity, he can grant residence in Vrindavan and even love for Krishna. But Vishnu of Chakravati Thakur and the six Goswamis want something even more than those wonderful benedictions. They desire to obtain the love that is personally possessed by Giriraj, a love that is only possible to obtain 
by worshipping him as a devotee. <coughs> the ontological positions of the six Goswamis and our principal charis, such as Vrindavan, such as Vishwanath Chakravarti Tako, are as main servants of Srimati Radharani. The principal mood of Radha's main servants is to bring Radha and Krishna together. And this is also the purpose of Giriraj, who came from Krishna's heart in response to Radha's request to make a place for them to be together to perform the Rasambila. Therefore, our Goswami Acharyas have focused their worship on Govardhan as the greatest of all devotees, the mountain of Krishna's personified love for Radharani. So there's many other wonderful articles in this book um, and the different Ashtakas and the, the stories, different stories about how Govardhan came to Rajdham because you know, he was born as the son of the Drona, Drona Jal Mountains. So there's different pastimes about that that I um, encourage you to have a look at that if you are interested. But we'll end the class here if anybody has any questions or comments, anything they want to add. Vadhan and the Prabhu actually, um, before, like, I think that was in 2016 or 17 that he published that book. So at the same time, during the uh, Govardhan retreat, he did the Govardhan of Vasa Prasadashana Ashtakam. He did, did the whole thing across, I think, across three years. I think I can't remember whether it's 15, 16, 17, or 16, 17, 18. Three years. That he... Oh, yeah, he, he can speak. Days and days on the topic. I, I saw I just on. Um, he started giving some classes during the lockdown online, and uh, I think he was up to like class forty on <laughs> on just the Govardhan Ashtagam, you know, the famous one. So he can literally speak forever on the topic. Yeah, I think were you there at the time? Were you? Yeah. Yeah. We were there for a couple of years. I think we did sixteen and eighteen. I think we did more so it was yeah. really nice. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful experience then, Sandra. Yeah. And also, another thing that comes to mind is when you're talking about um, the mercy of the devotee, um, um, you know, our classes, our Guru Maharaj is doing on Brahad Bhagavad Gamrata, it's a quote from Bhagavatam 10 8 49, where um, it describes how Nanda and Yeshoda, because they were benedicted by Brahma to have the service to Lord Krishna, they obtained that even though uh, Vasudev and Devaki, they had the Lord's own promise to become their son. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The service is more important than the position. And and that's what, so, so they, even though the Lord himself gave the boon to them that he'll be born as their son, but here because Brahma, who is the Lord's devotee, who then uh-huh. benedicts Mm. So Prabhupada writes in that book that Yeah, that so you get the mercy of the devotee. devotee. <laughs> and therefore they get more enjoyment with Krishna directly rather than Devaki and Vasudev who did not get to enjoy the childhood pastimes. Yeah, of yeah. Krishna. Oh yeah, of course we know from the famous example of the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna's what Mahabharata that Krishna is more interested in upholding his devotee's promises than his own promises, right? Of, um, with uh, with Vishma Dev, right? He was it's going to protect Arjuna over you know, devaluing his own promise. So, yeah. Great, thanks. Man. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? All right. Krantura, Srimad Bhagavatam, Samaveda Bhaktivedanti. If anybody knows on Zoom, sorry. Okay. Noted. So, if anybody on Zoom wants to ask a question, uh, hello, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, one man is in us. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I was just saying that it is said over here in this verse that anyone who takes the name of Krishna is a unconscious slave, also uh, receives the freedom from all states. So we are doing the 16 rounds. So we are being forgiven all the sins every day. That's all I wanted to say. What, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, it's, it's so powerful. Sometimes we we take the power of the names for granted. Uh, in this verse, it has the word. Um, what was that word? Vibhasha in the second line. 
Vibrasha means even involuntarily or even uh, not intentionally, right? Um, as if by force, right? That's the same word that's used when somebody becomes a devotee pretty from their past life. You know, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that they're forcibly, forcibly attracted to devotional service. It's the same word, right? So by practicing regularly throughout one's life the chanting of Krishna's name, then at the time of death, the idea is that Vibhasha, even if there's all kinds of bodily things going on which are, you know, painful and, and, and distracting or maybe maybe totally even, you know, not in a place to conscientiously be able to peacefully chant, but still there'll be like a like a uh, spontaneous or like a reflex, let's say a reflex reaction is like when you've, you know, used the muscle that much, you know, it's, it's in the muscle memory, you know, so, um, yeah, like that, the one will forcibly, or, you know, as a reflex chant the, the name of Krishna and death and in this way attain the benefit, be free from all sins and go back to that end. Yeah, absolutely. All of the names of Krishna, um, like we just hear every day in the Shikshastakam, you've, you've empowered all of your names with your Nijaslava Shakti, with all of your potencies, right? So all of the names have all of the potencies. Um, and they all have the power to clean sins and give the liberation and all of those things. We're also, at the same time, encouraged to chant a certain name of a certain uh, form of the Lord with love to go and to enter the service of one's Ishta day, right? So that's, that's there on top of it as well. It's not just all about getting free from sins and liberation, it's also about bhakti and, and, and going to the service of one's Ishta day. So also one more thing, the uh, Gurus give names of uh, Krishna to devotees who are initiated. Uh, it's amazing that, uh, that those names are also very transcendental names, beautiful names. And therefore it is very liberating as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So many beautiful names of Krishna. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you, Prabhupada. Okay, what is Krantaraj, Srimad Bhagavatam, he died.